2021 was a big year for the Yukon because that was the first year that we got this in the AT4 spec, meaning that you have the best what GMZ has to offer when it comes to luxury, and then they lifted it by two inches, so you also have some off-road capabilities in this thing. This is a 2023 model that is for sale right here at ClearShift. I'm gonna link that down in the description here in Denver. And what we're gonna do in this video is to have a look at this design. We're gonna have a look at the front end. What makes it different from a normal Yukon? The side, the rear view, and then the luxurious interior. And then, of course, we're gonna take it for a drive. Let's have a look at some of the basic spec and tech of the 2023 GMC Yukon AT4. You have a 5.3 liter naturally aspirated V8, putting out 355 horsepower, 383 pounds feet of torque connected to a 10-speed automatic transmission. It's all-wheel drive, obviously, and 0 to 60 takes 7.2 seconds. Fuel economy comes in at 16 city, 20 highway, and the price for this one is $77,000. So starting with the front end design of this thing, and it has this presence to it. Very stately, elegant design, almost architectural because this is a huge vehicle. So we need to have a bunch of horizontal lines going across the front end. As you can see in the bumper, we have a clear bumper separation between the lower section and the top part. And one detail that I love here on the AT4 uh, trim is that we have this being in this dark silver. It's not like chrome. It's more like a polished dark aluminum trim that we have in the grill looking fantastic. Fantastic, specifically in contrast with the red GMC logo that we have right here. And of course, we also have a completely redesigned front end that came out in 2021. I did like the old version of the Yukon as well. It has that New York Manhattan feel to it. This feels a little bit more elegant, I would say, with these C-shaped daytime run lights. And you also have the, of course, the indicator being the same LED bar. And you have this nice chamfer going from the headlight into the grill. So you might ask yourself, what is the difference between the AT4 and a normal old Yukon? Well, you have the grill, the trim of the grill not being chrome, thankfully. This, I think, looks a lot better than chrome. A little less luxurious, more on the sporty side. But the biggest changes happen at the very bottom. You have these red tow hooks here. And listen to this. This up here is plastic. You might think, what's up with that? If this is going to be an off-road vehicle, you don't want to have plastic skid plates. But it turns into metal further back. So it has this plastic trim just for decoration in the front end, but when it really matters, everything, all the skid plates underneath here, it's definitely metal. Then you have these fog lights right here, some gloss black. I would maybe want to see some intakes next to the fog lights right here, but overall I think it's a really great front end. And I do want to do the same redesign I did with a normal Yukon on this one, and let's talk about that right now. Overall, I think I'm in the minority here, but I think, th yes, this is a great looking front end, but comparing this to the cheaper Tahoe, Personally, I know I'm going to get a lot of heat for this maybe, but I do prefer the front end of the Tahoe for a simple reason that we have this cut line being straight across the entire front end of the Tahoe. Here you have the grill sticking up into the grill and I would rather have a just a sharp line and everything happens underneath it when it comes to the graphics. So what do I want to redesign in this? If you watch my Yukon video, you're already going to know this, but I might just as well, as well do it again here. So you see this C-shape that we have on this light with the GMC on the side looking beautiful. This angle here is just angled slightly downward. So what I would want to do, just tilt this back up to be in the same angle as we have up here. Basically, uh, uh, 90 degrees from this corner here into this LED. And that's just a tiny little change that I think would add some more uh, stateliness to this uh, top of the line Yukon. And I think it would look better to just have it be in the same line as we have up top. Now looking at the side view of the 2023 Yukon AT4, you can see just how big this is. This is essentially a small apartment on wheels. You could probably live in here if you just fold down the rear seats, put up a desk, work from the back seat. So what do we have when talking about the wheels and tires? We have 20 inch wheels specific for the AT4. I think they look great because we have black in the side of the spokes, but then on the faces, as you can see, it's a brushed aluminum or something like that. Just a silver color to make the spoke design stand out a little bit more. Looking at the tire size, you have 275 millimeter wide tires with a 60 sidewall. So there are fat tires on top of a pretty large wheel, 20 inch for an off-road vehicle. That's, I guess, what I have on my truck as well, but I also have 35 inch tires. But it looks good and looks definitely off-road capable with the Goodyear all-terrain tires. Now, of course, this being such a huge vehicle and GMC stately SUV, we need to have a sharp shoulder line. You can see where it starts right in the corner of the headlights, cutting right underneath the side mirror mount here and moving further back. 
goes all the way back. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down, it doesn't fade. It's just a clean line from one corner of the key graphics in the rear to the key graphics in the front. That, However, looking at this graphics right here, this black piece with this same type of silver that we have in the grill, I would like this to, you know, say what's underneath the hood. Since we have a 5.3 liter V8 under the hood, just put it out here underneath in red or maybe even remove the GMC and just have that inside of that emblem right there. Then we have the 84 logo here with the red 4 looking beautiful. You have the blacked out side mirrors, gloss black with the indicator integrated in the side. Moving further back here, this is an area that I love about these big SUVs. This panel of glass with this nice chamfer that houses it on the lower section, it just looks beautiful because compare this section here to what's going on with all the trim pieces that you have in this area. It's not as clean in this area as it is back here. And I think they did a fantastic job integrating this huge glass panel in the bottom of the Yukon. One last thing about the side view here is that we do have this fixed side step on uh, the side. It's not the retractable ones. I do think, pretty sure that's an option for the 84, but that's one of these things that I personally don't really care about. I actually think this looks pretty good because having it extend like this kind of makes the side view look a bit more planted. Not sure if that's what you want when you go for the 84 to have it look planted. But the bottom line is I don't really mind it having it be fixed. Alrighty, coming around to the rear view of the GMC Yukon 84X. And I think it looks great here. This has much more of an architectural approach than we have in the front end because there's not a lot of grills and stuff, vents that you need to put in the rear end. We have one big horizontal line cutting off the glass up top and have a look at this very clean surface in this area because they hid the wiper under here so you can only see the wiper when it's actually active. Then we have the same trim that we have in the grill, this darker uh, uh, chrome. It, it looks maybe cr dark chrome, I'm not sure what this is called, but it looks a lot better than just the bright chrome that we have on normal Yukons so with the uh, GMC logo in the middle. You have the rear mount of the camera centered right here and you have a big handle to open this whole thing up. Now, as we go further down on the design of the rear end, I do like actually that we don't have any exhaust pipes. It would maybe be cool to see, I don't know, a cutout here for some exhaust since we do have the big uh, V8 in this uh, vehicle. But since it is an off-road uh, truck, I do prefer to have a better departure angle and not scratch any pipes that you have in the rear because they're tucked in all the way in there. This is all plastic, so we don't have any metal skid plates here. You have a spare tire mounted right underneath there as well. So let's open this up. Let me show you how big this is when we open the uh, trunk of this thing. And of course, in here, if you want to, you can fold down all the seats. So you can fold down the left seat right here if you want to do that and have even more space. You can fold it back up. It's all powered, which is absolutely fantastic. If you're lazy, you don't want to go around to the side. It's also going to save you a lot of time. I do like that feature on this uh, Yukon. It makes it for a lot more uh, quicker adjustments right here in the back end. And this is also obviously power adjustable. Just hit that button and it's going to close back up. You can also open the top part separately by just hitting a button somewhere. I'm not going to look. I'm not going to cheat. I think it's this one. There we go. It was that one. It was just a little sticky or something. So you can, you can option to open up the top part separately like this. You just want to throw in some simple and light stuff upstairs without having to open the entire truck uh, trunk in the rear end. Quickly talking about these taillights here. I do like the design of this because it brings back to the design that we have in the C-shape in the front end with this C-shape design that doesn't stick out too much like it does in the front end because you need to keep in mind, want to keep the cost down low and sticking in the taillights into this section, it's going to add a lot of cost to the engineering of this piece. So I do like that they cut it right here. We also have the reverse light here and as you can see, the indicators are integrated in this red part with a pretty dynamic looking LED light here because it's thicker in the end points and looking pretty clean. Well, here we are inside the GMC Yukon 84 2023 model year. Let's fire this up with the start button right here. Let's get a little bit of that air flowing. We do have a 10.3, I believe this infotainment screen is. And it looks pretty well integrated in the overall design and the dash of this thing. GMC right now, uh, they do have some very special um, buttons when it comes to the gear selector, which I've showed before, but it, I've never seen that in any other vehicle. We're going to talk about that in just a second. You also have a fully digital gauge cluster. I do believe this is a 12.3 inch gauge cluster and look at the beautiful housing for this leather wrapped housing. You have some hard plastic on the inside and you have this 
uh, brown stitching going around, the same brown stitching that, ha that we have in the seats as well. So looking at this infotainment screen. What I love normally about uh, Yukon's infotainment screen are the cameras, but in this case, this is not equipped with all the cameras you can get. So you have a reverse camera, and you also have a trailer hookup camera in this case. The reverse camera does look a little grainy, but I can make out which ones are Cadillac Escalades and which ones are GMC Yukons uh, from a distance. So I guess that's how you can tell how good this system is. It's not the best one, but it does have trajectory lines and it's definitely gonna help you not reverse into the Cadillac that's right behind me. Other than that, you do have the maps, obviously, and this is Google Maps, so you do have, need to have a plan to make this work. And of course, you can connect your phone through Apple CarPlay or if you have an Android, Android Auto, if you wanna do that. Pretty basic layout for this thing, and I do like how the user interface is uh, set up. It's very easy to use and it's not complicated at all. You can find what you want pretty fast using the settings that you have in here. Moving further down, you do have two square air vents with this uh, thing to adjust it. I'm not sure what to call this, this little toggle. Uh, pretty standard stuff. You've seen this uh, before in a thousand other cars and that's exactly what you want to see with the air vents. If something is working, has been working for so long, it's such a simple feature, don't make it too complicated. And I do like that they stuck with the traditional vents here because that's exactly what I want in a car like this. Then you have this chrome outline or silver, um, I'm not sure if this is, this is also one of these like half chrome, half aluminum type uh, trim that goes all around the top part of the dashboard with the gear selector here. So if you wanna go in park, you press it, or if you wanna go into neutral, you also press the button. But if you wanna go in reverse or drive, you put your finger underneath and you pull it up. That's how you go into reverse or drive, go back to park, you press it. It's a pretty unique integration of a gear selector. I think it works pretty well. Further down, you do have the controls for the audio. Audio sounds pretty good in this car. I'm not sure if this, if this does have the Bose sound system, so that might be the reason why. You have some more buttons here for the radio controls. Further down is the controls for all the climate control settings. And look at the beautiful dials that we have for the temperature, for example. You also have some dials for the on and off for the fan speed, how you adjust that. Super easy to do, no problems at all. And on top of that, you do have heated and cooled seats here in three different levels, which is fantastic because cooled seats on a day like this, today when it's, uh, oh, it's up here, 81 degrees, but the sun is strong here in Colorado. 81 doesn't, might not sound like it's super hot, but trust me, it is hot today, specifically in a black, all black car like this. Moving further down, you do have the USB ports, a normal USB, USB-C, absolutely fantastic, with a uh, cigarette outlet there as well, with the compartment down here for the wireless charging, which is pretty big. I do believe that your phone is actually gonna slide around a little bit down here because it is a huge area and it is rubberized, but this rubber feels pretty slippery, so I'm not sure about that. It's gonna slide around a little bit. You gotta be easy on the gas when you drive this 5.3 liter V8 to not mess up your phone. Two large cup holders here, American sized, I would say. And further back, you do have this armrest which you can open up. You also have this organizer tray that you can take out and just clean. You can have maybe a couple of markers in here and some uh, gouache or something like that on the side. And underneath it, you have a massive storage compartment. It's just a big box down here to put your sketchbooks in. So you have everything you need to just park this thing somewhere out in the forest and then you get the inspiration from nature. You're ready to start sketching. You have everything down here in under this armrest. On top of it, you have this little uh, slot here or indent which is also rubberized I'm not sure if you can take this out I don't think so but it is a uh, nice area to just have your for example I would probably put the you know, maybe keys or something in here I don't think they were gonna slide off I do like the design of this armrest it's leather wrapped as you can see with some perforation in the middle and this brown stitching going all around it beautifully done Looking at the seats, I do like that they made it special for the 84. So we have 84 embroidered in the headrest up top, looking nice. And you also have this contrast coloring. You have the black leather with this brown leather in the middle in some slots. Just make it look a little more nice. You also have the brown piping and the stitching on the seats. Overall, fantastic looking seats. They don't have a lot of bolstering to them. But this is not a vehicle that you're gonna go, you know, take up in the canyons and race around in. So it's not that type of vehicle, so it's okay. Looking at the steering wheel, a pretty traditional looking GMC steering wheel with all the controls for the um, gauge cluster right here on the right side. And you can go into settings here, display layout. You can have progressive, classic, digital, or clean. 
I like to have it in classic with the two dials being round on each end point of the screen. So you have the speedometer to the left and the tachometer to the right with whatever you want in the center. Pretty nice integration of this display. On the left side, you have the controls for the cruise control settings and the heated steering wheel. You also have the same um, stitching, the brown stitching in, on the steering wheel here as well. I, I like that. It comes back from the interior to the steering wheel and all around the car. It makes it feel congruent in here. On the left side, there's a, a lot of buttons here. You have the auto stop for the engine. Let's turn that off. You have the controls for the four wheel drive, high, low, two wheel drive, uh, high as well. And you have the lighting settings here right next to it with a dial. You also have the parking brake button situated right all the way to the left. Looking up top, you do have one of these huge sunroofs back here, which you can open up all the way back to the, uh, this is actually the button for the rear seat. So right now I'm opening the third row seats. I did not expect to find the buttons up here, but you have them up here from the driver position. You also have them back there as I just showed you earlier. Very convenient. So let's have a look at this sliding uh, roof, sunroof up here. Goes all the way back to the path to the seats of the, and you, as you can see, it gets a little windy in here. So let's close this up, even though this is not open, it's just generally flying, stuff or just flying around here because we might get some rain in uh, in a minute or two. I forgot to mention, there is this little hidden compartment next to the uh, infotainment screen to the right, which is very deep. It's like I'm sticking my hand into the engine, engine bay by just putting it in here, but uh, not sure what you want to have in there. You can't really fit a lot of stuff. Maybe longer things can fit perfect probably for a couple of big pens, I would say. Talking about the doors here, I like the organization that we have in the doors. It's very uh, structured and organized, very horizontal uh, and vertical. And you have big compartments in two different layers, in addition to the Bose sound system that is integrated nicely in the overall design and the same stitching that we have here on the dash and on the seats come back in the doors as well. Just like I talked about, very congruent when it comes to the coloring and stitching of this interior. Last but not least, we do, of course, this being a Yukon, it is a pretty large glove compartment right here. With that said, let's jump into the back seat and let's check out the space behind my own driving position. All right, guys, jumping in to the second row. As I said, we do have third row, three rows in here. I'm going to show you the th uh, third row in just a minute. So what we have down here is, of course, plenty of space because this is, as I said, a small apartment on a wheel. So there's no problems there. We do have a third zone for the climate settings here. So you can adjust your settings back here independently of what's going on in the front end. Very nice dial for the temperature and the fan speed. You also have heated seats for both sides of this row of seats and two, two USB-C ports. In addition to a house outlet at the very bottom, if you fold this center down, you're gonna have two cup holders here and a pretty comfortable armrest as well. It is that time once again to take out this 2023 Yukon AT4 for a drive. So let's see what this is all about. If it's more comfortable than the normal Yukon, which is already very, very comfortable, it's pretty hard to beat. But I do think having these off-road tires that we have here, the Goodyear all-terrain tires, will probably make it a little bit more comfortable than what you have in the normal Yukon. Under the hood, we have a 5.3 liter um, V8, naturally aspirated, 355 horsepower, which honestly is not a lot for this type of vehicle. You might sound like 355 horsepower for a 5.3 liter V8, but you do have a small house to move under that power. So uh, let's go out here and let's step on it and let's see what this does. Here we go. We're also going downhill now, by the way. <laughs> so it's not the not the quickest of cars, uh, but that's okay. Not every single car needs to be, you know, hyper quick. And this is not one of these cars. This is all about comfort, all about luxury and smoothness, and being able to take all that luxury and smoothness off road. That's what this AT4 does so well. We have a 10-speed automatic, which as in any vehicle this 10 speed is very very smooth and uh, you barely feel the shifts you know this is one of these vehicles where you just get in 
put it, of course, automatic. We don't have paddles here. Actually, do we? What are these things? I think these are for the radio settings. We don't have paddles in this. Just get into this car, go for a long drive, and you're not gonna be tired for a very long time because it's so smooth and comfortable in here. And in addition to this, not sure if the two inch lift has anything to do with the comfort and the suspension, but it feels just as smooth as a normal Yukon, or maybe even smoother, I'm not entirely sure. They're all very smooth is, is the bottom line here. All of these big SUVs, they're all very, very smooth when it comes to the drive and the ride. One thing I do wish that I had here is the, uh, which should be included standard feature in this Yukon, but that is the digital rear view mirror. Right now I just have a normal one and uh, yeah, it, it looks like the rear mirror is very far away from me right now, which it is because it is a long vehicle and I have a very slim little window that I can see back and that is through the window itself. So I wish it had this uh, digital rear, uh, rear view mirror. Making a U-turn here, better than expected. It's still a pretty large U-turn, but having these big wheels and this big wheelbase, not bad. One uh, modification that I would probably do, I, I think you know what's coming up now since I just um, pressed on the, on the gas over there. Since we do have a 5.3 liter V8 up top, you kind of want to hear it when you're driving it a little bit more. Listen, listen right now, for example. Into second and into third. It still sounds pretty good. I mean, you can tell that it's a V8, but it's been muffled. So I want to open that noise up doesn't matter if we have exhaust pipe visible in the rear, but I just want to hear the V8 specifically from the driver's seat. Just want to acknowledge GMC. Thank you, GMC, for keeping uh, everything digital in here. That's fine. Gauge cluster and infotainment screen, but for keeping the housing for it and not just putting, you know, a widescreen TV on the dash and call it a day. They put some effort into making it nice in here, even if everything is digital, still feels very high quality and you have zero glare in the infotainment you don't have anything in the infotainment either because it has almost an upright 90 degree angle to it so there's no sun really hitting the infotainment screen but the gauge cluster sits so deep in that the contrast of the cluster itself is really crisp and sharp thank you for coming along on this ride in this 2023 uh, gmc yukon uh, yukon 84 this one is for sale right here at uh, clear shift in denver if you want to go and check this out in their full inventory i'm going to link that as always down in the description and thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video